Welcome to Soltron. This is a video review for the DX Legend, pretty much, King Oger. And here's a size comparison. So you can see he's almost like Commander class in Transformers, but he's much smaller than Don Oni Taijin. And here's the box. I got the gift set with the god Kabuto, so it's enormous. It's probably as big as Don Oni Taijin's box, even though he's so much smaller. And here's the much smaller box of the God Hopper, of course. And you can see like the combine on the back. And I got this on Amazon Japan, and I was really lucky because I got the little bonus that came with it, which is just really awesome looking. Yeah, I highly recommend it. And here's the 360 view of this guy. I think he looks pretty good. I really, I actually really do like the gold accessories on him. The, the cannon is definitely like oversized and ridiculous. And so is the chest piece. Like they're not really in proportion with him. But I still really enjoy the way that everything comes together. Even though it does look a mess. Like it would have been nice if there was some more uniting colors. So just because he's kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of different pieces... I would say, like, as far as robots go, this guy's probably like a an 8 in looks. He's very busy looking. He could have definitely looked a little bit cleaner. And if we look at the head sculpt, that's kind of part of the problem for me. He just looks like he's got a grumpy baby face. Like, this face it does not look intimidating. It just looks like he's frowning and he's fat. It's just, just not a great head sculpt for this robot unfortunately but yeah again i really like how all the different different elements kind of come together even though it is kind of a mess to look at it's really hard to tell what's even going on there's just so much to look at um his little wings are supposed to like fold down here but they that makes it look less like a foot to me so i like to fold them up and same thing with like the mantis arms. Those are supposed to be folded down, I think, technically. But that just does not look anything like a foot. So I think having those out of the way. And then plus the sword. The other thing I like to do to clean it up a little bit is fold these butterfly wings in. But I think that's also incorrect. It's supposed to look more like that. So his original mode, he looks more like this, which I think is even more of a mess. But yeah, I've um, just from playing with him, I've just gotten accustomed to it. Initially, I really didn't like it, and I'm I'm slowly piece by piece coming around. I'm hoping the final combination is somehow a little bit cleaner. But this is a combination of twelve mecha at this point, which is pretty ridiculous. So let's go over his articulation. Well, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to do his articulation. This his head is on a ball joint, so that's nice. He's got this, he's got a swiveling bicep. He's got a very weird joint that's like high in the bicep. And then he's got an elbow joint on top of that. So he's got a good amount, amount of art, arm articulation. And then he's got like this transformation joint if you happen to need that too. So he's got good articulation in his arms and they are on ratchets. So he can actually hold all this ridiculous weaponry. And then he's got a waist swivel, which is on a ratchet. Very nice. And then he's got universal legs, which kick out all the way. And then we'll kick back all the way as well. You'll have to take my word for it. I know you can't really see anything. And then he's got like 90 degrees at the knee. And then he's got very sad little ankle rockers, which do pretty much nothing. They're, they might as well have not been there, let's be honest. They don't do anything. And you can see his whole chest armor fell off. But everything just pegs in very easily. So yeah, the biggest problem is you're going to lose a lot of the articulation just because there's so much in the way and going on in this figure. Like, there's just too much. He's just ridiculous. And then you take in all the 
like extra little details and your your eyes just go kind of crazy looking at this guy and the cannon especially is like a big issue because it gets in the way of his back wings it's hard to pose it in like a convincing way oh, and because it's so long it's very hard for him to like wield it without falling over so there he is like you can have him kind of turn his head in the direction of the cannon, which is cool. But you can see this thing is just enormous. And I initially didn't like the design of it, but the more I play with it, the more I appreciate just like how overpowered and monstrous looking this cannon is. Even though it's kind of skinny, it just really makes him look very intimidating. So I'm going to just start taking off his extra mecha like one piece at a time so this was like the newest piece was the the god hopper here and you can see it all it does is basically split in half and then pretty much he's a grasshopper and then he's got these little bits that stick onto the knees to make the knees of the robot more pronounced which is nice and then you're just going to clip these onto the side of the hopper and then he's going to you're going to extend out his rear legs. And there he is, transformed. Looks pretty good. And then he's got a very cool little gimmick where you just press down on his back here. And it's spring-loaded, so he can, he can kind of do a little, a sad little hop. Of course, it's not strong enough to actually have him launch, but it's a pretty fun gimmick. And it doesn't really get in the way with the combination, so what else could you ask for? So the other... Like, big accessory is the god Kabuto here, the beetle. So you have to take off the ladybug, and you're just going to reattach that to the forearm here. Let me just straighten out the legs here. you got to move these out of the way to get any arm articulation. And then you can see you've got this very long, imposing beam weapon, and you're going to use the... You're just going to move this out of the way it's on a spring and you're just going to fold this in half and then you fold up the leg section and kind of get that out of the way the best you can and then you just fold out the back section and then you're going to shift the whole leg assembly it's kind of on an armature and you're just going to close up the beetle and then everything clicks together very nicely and you just fold up his horn and there you go you get a very convincing looking kabuto and this one also has a spring-loaded gimmick right here so you can pull on the horn and it makes whatever you call this thing move up and down so pretty good gimmick on that guy so we'll just set him aside and now you have a cleaner looking 10-piece combination of this guy which i think looks okay it's i, I still prefer like having this folded in it makes the sword a little bit look a little bit better and then you get like kind of issues because his footprint is so irregular. He's prone to fall over. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with his feet. Hopefully he gets bigger feet so he can actually be more stable. But you can see he's starting to clean up a little bit. And I do appreciate that his beetle wings kind of go with the dragonfly wings to make it look like he could actually fly, fly around and hover. That's really cool. I wish the butterfly wings would have actually been on the legs, on the boots like these hornet wings. I think that would have been cooler if you had just two sets of wings and then it would have got these wings out of the way. But here's the 10 piece combination, which I think looks pretty good overall. But I don't know, it's a little bit ridiculous. So you get these ladybugs, which basically do nothing. They just clip on. And then probably the biggest defender is this ant who just clips onto the sword. That's like his whole job. Um, I'm sure in the show they do something more worthwhile, but just as a toy, these just seem like pointless little accessories. It kind of, I guess it's kind of cool because it armors him up a little bit. And then you get these two spiders, which are identical. And they just clip onto the chest and the waist. You can reverse them for like a different color change, I guess. But I do like that the um, most of the insect's eyes are green, which kind of ties them together a little bit, even though the mecha's eyes aren't green. And now you have, like after you take off all these extra little 
armor bits, you now have kind of a, let's see, I just took off five. So now this is like the five part combination, which I think is a little bit better. He's now cleaner. He can, he can articulate better. We still have the issue with this kind of dumb butterfly sword, but I think he looks a lot cleaner. He's more lean. Um, I think the arms kind of suffer from not having the ladybugs on them, but overall I kind of prefer this look, even though he looks a little bit too skinny. And then we can go down another level and give him like a four piece combination. So we can actually remove the dragonfly bits. So we can take the tail out and then we can slide off the dragon wings. And then we can just peg that together. Everything pegs together very nicely and you got a very cool looking dragonfly with really gorgeous eyes. And now I like, what I like to do in this combination is take the butterfly clip and just clip it back here in the backpack and then just kind of angle them back a little bit. This doesn't hold like super securely. It's prone to being knocked off. But now we have a very clean looking four part combination. And this is like the most minimal you can get him. So now you can get a much better look at his articulation and he can actually pose and do things now, which is very nice. So you can actually pull off some cool looking poses where it looks like he's doing a common rider kick or something. So you can get a much better idea of his posing. You get pretty much every piece of articulation you could possibly need. But he's just got so much armor on him, everything just gets in the way and tends to fall off. But yeah, so this is like the most minimal look you can get with this guy. And I think he looks kind of good like this too. And I like that there's only four robots. It's not so busy looking. And then you can just go ahead and like fold up his horns here. And then the butterfly can basically just fly. And then it's got clips in the abdomen, which hold the head. So it can just basically land on its head. And then you can try to pull this off. The ball joint typically disengages. Oh yeah. So this little butterfly legs came off, but basically there's your butterfly. And then you can just rotate these legs forward and you can see there's just like the robot head is kind of peeking out the back a little bit. So that's a pretty good looking robot too with fluttering arms or wings. And now you have like this headless robot. So you can might as well just put it out of its misery and pull off the rest of its body parts. So the Hornet I think looks really good. It looks like something out of Sonic the Hedgehog, actually. But it's cool that it can actually, like, enter a fight mode and point its stinger forward. But this is not a bad-looking robot. And then the Mantis looks okay. It's kind of creepy-looking, but I guess that's what it's supposed to be. And then you fold, like, the abdomen back here. And then you have the legs. And then you've got this head, which basically turns like this. And you can kind of get a little bit of side-to-side -side on it. And then these are also on ball joints. And I should note that these parts are rubber, unfortunately. So is the head of this guy. So this is one of my least favorite of the insects because he has rubber parts, which I just never like on a robot. And then you have the main combination. So the main body is like 90% of it, or maybe like 80% of it is actually just the main beetle. So it's like a Hercules beetle, I think. I'm not sure. But you just point these pincers forward. And then you're going to rotate these arms out of the way on that transformation joint. And then you can rotate them down. And then use the double joints on the arms to make it into rear legs. Then we just do the same thing here. It's pretty simple. And then you can just rotate the beetle's head up 
and then you can see its tiny little eyes right here on the side of its head and then you just fold these extra legs down and there you have the beetle mode he doesn't really do anything special but he looks cool and then he's got these wings back here as well so pretty clean looking beetle mode it does just look like a robot beetle that wouldn't transform so that's a good disguise here's the whole set of them. I think part of what they were going for is making insects that actually scale together really well. And I think they really did pull that off. And then here he is with like a deluxe car. So you can see that the car is like a lot bigger than some of the other insects and smaller than the other ones. Um, yeah, I really like this set. I don't know how the show goes. I think if the show starts off with like just the primary members and then each episode they add one or two members. I think that's a pretty good idea. Any members like add armor and things to the base configuration. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, one thing that does bother me, I'll talk about the quality, is they use a lot of ball joints in these figures, which is really uncommon in Sentai figures. And it does cheapen the feel of these figures a lot. It makes them feel a lot more floppy. His wings can also open, by the way. Whereas... There's not as much ratcheting. There's a lot of parts you can just, I mean, you could just pop them off. These are like Lego kind of ball joints. You know what? I don't really want to tempt fate, but yeah, these are just on ball joints. They could pop off. You could see like the beetle, main beetle legs are just on these like Lego looking ball joints that can really just be pulled off. Things, these especially are one of the biggest offenders. These just pop right off like with no effort at all. So you end up with, yeah, and then same for the butterfly. I just popped off the neck joint by accident. The head is still lodged in its abdomen. These legs just pop off. The, the uh, dragonfly wings kind of don't articulate quite right. These also just like can be pulled off. You can just really make like a thousand little bits of these robots just by pulling things off. These ones are actually in pretty good. I don't want to pull these off. But that kind of annoys me is that it has all these parts that fall off, which really like hinders the quality feeling of these figures. Like it just makes them feel a lot cheaper because things are just constantly, you, you knock them the wrong way and bits will just pop right off. So it really just makes this set feel a lot cheaper than it is. It's a lot cheaper feeling than other Sentai robots. I would say probably quality. These things are probably like an eight. They're kind of in line with Transformers figures where sometimes you'll get a Transformer where his arm will just pop off or something like that. But it, it does cheapen the whole feel. Like it doesn't feel like Oni Taijin at all. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, I'm hoping that the ultimate combination like makes this all worth it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this set as it is, I really do like it, but probably not enough to keep it unless the the next couple combinations are also really awesome. All right, that's about it. See you in the next one.